definitely not regular video content for y'all here on my channel, but if you're a subscriber, you know that we have had some challenges for our family, specifically with a very rare disease called juvenile dermatomyositis, JDM for short. If you found this video because of JDM or donating your hair, welcome. I am Julie, a professional competition shooter sharing safe, responsible gun ownership here on YouTube and elsewhere on social media. Thank you so much for watching. And to all of you who have followed our journey, your kind words and prayers, gosh, they mean so very much. We are so grateful. In honor of Rare Disease Day, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick update on our daughter's battle and also share some simple ways that you can help others who face such challenges. Juvenile dermatomyositis is a myositis disease where essentially the immune system gets confused and uh, it decides to wage war on the muscles instead of just attacking bacteria, viruses, and the things it's supposed to. I will leave links to the other videos that I've posted about it below, but it is a very difficult disease to diagnose and to treat. It's a good thing to be rare, right? It's a good thing to be special. <laughs> well, not if you're a disease. Like a lot of other rare diseases, JDM treatment is limited because the funding and awareness are both limited. Drug companies, hospitals, doctors, they're all primarily focused on, you know, the major stuff, the common ailments and diseases that affect so many people, and that is completely understandable. But I can say this as a parent, um, that it's particularly tough to know that you're not gonna be able to have the best treatments out there, because nobody knows. <laughs> with everything we know about the body and how to treat it, with rare diseases like JDM, it's extra hard on patients and their families, which is why I jump on here with updates and share progress on social media. The more people that know means the more kids can be diagnosed quicker and hopefully achieve remission. So to start, here are six ways that you can help children and families with JDM and other rare diseases too. Number one, contribute to a charity. Find a charity that truly supports patients and awareness. I personally cannot say enough about Cure JM as a charity from the resources, the support system, and their work to share leading medications and treatments. All of this has been so invaluable to our family. One of our great challenges in dealing with this disease are the flare-ups. Our daughter is on so many medications, so many, um, but with a flare, something as simple as the common cold can jumpstart that immune system and essentially negate all the progress that those meds have made. Um, through Cure JM, we learn about new and successful treatments that have helped others. Our daughter, aka Munchkin, <laughs> is sadly currently in a flare right now. And seeing that a new medication has had such positive results for other children took away a lot of the anxiety when we had to make the decision to add it to her treatment plan. Donations are what keep these organizations going. And if you're looking for a charity that does great work, I cannot say enough about Cure Jam. I will leave a link to a blog post with more details and where you can learn more below. I know. I know that times are tough, especially with inflation and other economic challenges that we're facing these days. I totally understand how monetary donations may not be possible for everyone. That said, there are still ways that you can support those who are diagnosed with rare diseases that I wanna share with you too that don't cost anything at all. So next up, I wanna talk about Amazon Smile. If you buy anything on Amazon and don't know about their Smile program, well, it is a great way to make your regular purchases have an impact. You pick your charity and each time you buy through Amazon Smile, they will donate 0.5% of the purchase price on items that are eligible for the program. Now, when you crunch those numbers, <laughs> this is not a huge amount of money and you'd have to buy a lot. I mean, seriously, a lot on Amazon. But the more people supporting a charity, the more it matters and every penny that can help matters when it comes to rare diseases. So check them out. The big thing, when you sign up and choose your charity, you have to make sure you go to your cart through smile.amazon.com whenever you buy anything. Otherwise, the charity of your choice won't get the money and it will just be a regular old Amazon purchase. 
That's kind of annoying, I know, uh, but I will leave a link to where you can learn more in the blog post below. Next up are Facebook and YouTube fundraisers. As much as we all love to hate Facebook from time to time, <laughs> they do make it very easy to set up fundraisers and even encourage you to celebrate your birthday by raising money for good causes. You do not have to wait for your birthday to run a Facebook fundraiser either. You can set one up at any time, share it to your profile and help raise funds through your Facebook friends, along with the added benefit of bringing awareness on social media. If you share videos on YouTube, you can also set up a fundraiser. It's a pretty easy process and a great way to help charities as well. Give platelets. I have a dear friend who's donated more platelets than anybody I've ever heard of. Platelet donations are a crucial ingredient in IVIG. IVIG stands for immunoglobulin intravenous infusions. This is a common yet extremely expensive treatment for many JDM patients. After our first flare, Munchkin started on an IVIG regimen in addition to her steroid infusions. IVIG is like a wonder cocktail that truly helps the immunocompromised and it's only made possible because of people like my dear friend and others who don't just give money and time but literally a part of themselves too. Platelets are a truly incredible gift. Yes, there are people out there who do not believe in a higher power or think prayers and well wishes are silly, but I truly believe in the power of positivity and prayer. When you have a child with a serious illness, it affects the whole family, from the child, parents, siblings, those who are truly close. The outpouring of support our family has received from the firearms community has been such, such a bright spot. Uh, I mean, it's incredible, really, how people have added us to prayer lists, have messaged kind words, some I've never even met in person. They take the time to ask check in and genuinely care even more than those who you think would be more interested and involved. This kindness and generosity inspire me to become a better and kinder person. And I am so grateful for you all. Um, it's hard not to get emotional thinking about it uh, because y'all have been so amazing. My husband and I believe in preparing for rainy days. And this has been a two plus year storm that has added strain and weight to our day-to-day -day lives. I've said this before, but my heart goes out to the families who don't have good insurance or haven't been able to budget the thousands of dollars in minimums and gas money and time, hotels, uh, all of these things that are required when facing something like this. We've had to make plenty of sacrifices, but for others, this has been much more difficult. If you learn about someone who has a life-threatening disease, kindness is so much, whether it's offering to mow the lawn, shovel the snow off the driveway, dropping off a ready-made meal, or sending a kind note in the mail. These moments bring sunshine to cloudy days. Munchkin has received challenge coins, letters, emails, gifts, <laughs> so kind. Um, for those uh, who don't get to live a normal kid life and their siblings, this kind of support and love really means a lot. This last one is another free way to show your support. For JDM, doctors borrow from cancer treatments to help control the disease. Friday nights are shot nights for us, and this past Friday, Munchkin has had shot number 131, I think, of a chemotherapy drug called methotrexate. Now, her weekly dose is much smaller than the dosages given for cancer, but it still causes nausea and, and hair loss. I have donated my hair a bunch of times over the years, and in 2020, I decided to grow it again. Uh, the pandemic actually made this pretty easy. <laughs> uh, there wasn't a lot of salons open, but because my daughter is at such a high risk from any sort of illness, I just haven't gone to a salon in a very long time. <laughs> the good news is that these strands have had a chance to grow, grow, grow. <laughs> there is a lovely charity called Wigs for Kids that I've decided to donate my hair to. You don't have to be a girl or a woman to do this. Uh, a shooting friend of mine started growing his hair during the pandemic and made a lovely donation of his locks, his flowing locks, to this charity. I will leave the information for them linked below too. I've been watching a ton of How to Cut Your Own Hair videos. And uh, yeah, it's time. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm a little nervous about this. I am not a professional here, but I did buy some hair shears and I'm going to do the best I can. You can laugh, cry, critique. It is all good because it is for a great cause. So I'll show you some, some video of the befores and the afters and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Did I give in? <laughs> I hope they will give in. Alright, here we go. We're just gonna do it. So there you have it, six ways to help those facing rare diseases. I so appreciate you joining me for this one. I hope you like the do good do. <laughs> I will leave links below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please share this video, like, subscribe, and until the next one, live your life fully loaded.